Chris, can you hear us? Yep. Hey, hello. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, fine. How are you? Thanks. It's good. I really appreciate you being here. I, I, we, we've been like exchanging emails uh, since yesterday. I actually, no, yesterday um, about if we should do this or not, be, uh, due to the to the uh, strange situ or uh, difficult situation all over the place, especially over there in the U.S. And I don't want. To, I think we both don't want this to um, look like a statement. We go back to normal. We um, we go back to the usual business. So I'd actually like to to start to, uh, with the situation uh, we are facing uh, right now, and ask um, from your perspective: Do you have the feeling that this time we kind of see a chance to um, to really that that there's a change or a process process starting that might introduce a real change in this systematic problems we are facing so long time. I mean, I hope so, you know. <laughs> um, you know, I'm actually hearing my voice coming back to me. Oh, maybe it's a little better now. No, I think I'm still getting some feedback here. I'm sorry. <laughs> can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope so, you know. Uh, it's, it's a difficult time. Um, I know everybody's, you know, feeling hopeful and just sad sickened by you know what what we've created here in the u.s what we've been living with what we've accepted in our lives and in our communities and our society and it's time for a change so i know um you know i know we're ready for that i know we can do it um it's this time it feels different there feels there's hope there's you know people are pushing for change and um you know, their their foot is on the gas, so I'm really hoping that um, that'll bring about some some serious change. Yeah, actually, the same. We we try we try to uh, also look at, not only look at the U.S. and say, oh, what a bad system in the U.S., but we have the same problems. Maybe not in the sa to the same degree, but we have racist problems, racist issue, of course, over here again. And we keep asking ourselves as musicians, as artists, also as like promoting a festival, what we can do. Um, about it. I mean, if there's anything we can do about it, I'm sure that there's long, lots of discussions in the community uh, over there as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the first step is is really, you know, educating yourself and having a conversation. Um, I've been teaching at Berkeley at the Institute for Jazz and Gender Justice this year, and uh, part of what we do, our work, is to invite artists to come and speak about their work, but also uh, racial injustice and uh, gender equity. And, uh, you know, this year has just been a totally <laughs> an incredible learning experience for me. Um, just, you know, artists speaking about the injustices they face, the oppression they face, that they what they live with every day. Um, and, you know, I myself just feel, you know, more educated and uh, more informed and in how to uh, share that information with younger with students with you know children um, with my children with my children's friends um, so I think it really starts with a conversation yeah actually I was trying to get at exactly that point because of course I came above the um, I came upon the the Institute of Justice, gender justice now what's the correct name Boston yeah, Institute jazz, of jazz and, jazz and gender justice. justice. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Because of course that 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 makes at, at, at least I mean to to make it visible to talk about it, not to to um, say this. There's no problem. It is the first step. And I was when I read the, about the program, I I uh, was curious, or I mean, this came made me curious uh, how the music would sound different if we wouldn't face discrimination, if women had a stronger part in it, if, if, and all these things. So, so actually, do you, can, can you hear already something changing in the, in the music when you, when you guys play there? Um, I don't know if I can hear directly. I mean, it's so hard to even say, you know, what is gender driven or connecting the dots there, but I do think there is a feeling of, openness and, um, you know, inviting different influences in and not feeling restricted to, you know, a certain way of doing things or hearing things or incorporating, you know, uh, different ideas. So um, in general, I just feel like there's an openness for the, the young students to try different things in the music, um, to also discuss the issues that they're facing, um, you know, 
uh, in their generation. And, uh, it's just been, it's been an incredible experience. Just, you know, again, a learning experience and, and, a, a feeling of openness, um, which I'm, I'm just so grateful to have the opportunity to have. Yeah. Um, I also read, apart from the agenda justice, I read that you kind of open a, an improvisation. Um, you emphasize on improvisation in in the things you do there. Is that right? That, that's kind yeah, of, exactly. And that's, yeah, I think, I'm trying to go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I'm just trying. Yeah, I'm trying to incorporate some more of the free improvisation aspects into um, the music and, and introduce the students to maybe some music they haven't heard and some different ways of, of writing and uh, improvising. Yeah, especially when we talk about <clears throat> this strange word, free improvisation, that that um, kind of brings us back to, to where we started, because what does that mean? Free from what? Free to go where? I, I mean, this is a, something to think about, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they, I'm saying there are millions. It's not only the musical influence we have when we play. There's millions of things in our environment, in, in our um, community, and in, in like the, the society we live in and stuff that influences our, while we play. And if, if, if we get that conscious, that might also bring a change in the music. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And I think, you know, I, I think it's important for people to feel free and, and to... It, Only good things can come from freedom and free improvisation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, especially like for you, when I when I look at your work, uh, you're such a universal musician. Like you, you get your sources like from so many different parts in the musical world. That's really impressive. I mean, I've, I see that not not first time, but this is very unique. I think, like I can hear some some. Uh, classical influences of course i see the references especially on your solo records with the two uh, jazz tunes kind of jazz tunes all the things you are in and um, evidence you you're kind of really uh, quoted to the to the jazz history but there are so many more more influences and more more things that come the source as a source into your music and like then then still being free that must be a big challenge too um I don't know. <laughs> For me, it feels natural. I think partly because I came from the jazz tradition and I love so many different kinds of music. I've played a lot of different kinds of music. Um, and, you know, but my home, my, where I really feel free to, to be who I want to be in the music is through free improvisation and, and incorporating composition into that improvisation. Um, so a lot of times those, that material that I come up with comes, stems from other genres of music and, um, it feels very natural. There's a kind of a flow between, you know, free improvisation and incorporating other things. So it's, for me, it's, yeah, it's a natural process. Yeah. Well, that, well, one can hear that when, 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 when I hear different records of yours, I, I, they are kind of very different, but still they feel like the same, uh, breath in a way. So, so when you, when you just said um, uh, incorporating uh, composition or, or mixing composition and free improvisation, maybe that brings us to the first like, little video uh, um, excerpt we wanted to look at. Since the, the internet connection doesn't make it possible to, to hear you play live, we decided to, to play some, inter, uh, some videos. And here's um, actually we, you choose a live um, excerpt from a live concert you do with Ingrid Laubock, also a project you, you will, uh, will introduce at the Monheim Triennale. This was in Buenos Aires, do I recall that right? Yes. Okay, and we hear, a, we hear a composition of yours, like an excerpt, we don't hear the whole thing, and a composition of yours. Uh, I don't remember the title. Uh, I think it's called Snakes and Lattice. Okay, so let's hear that and then we keep on talking a little bit. Thank you. 
Nice, very nice piece. I mean, I Thank heard the you. whole piece. I have to say, I, I didn't. I heard the, of course, I heard it longer at home. There are two things that come into my mind again now when I watch it. I've, I've seen it before, so, uh, obviously. Uh, one is that what you said before, the 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 switching between composing and improvising. That's that's very uh, nice to to hear in this and see in this in this example. There's no border. You're just going in and out all the time. Yeah, there there are sections. Um, you know that last section we heard is an improvised um, form where there's um, specific uh, you know melodic fragments that are written out. Then there are fragments that are just uh, rhythmically notated. Um, and Ingrid has some of those, but she's directed to. It's just really a solo section for her, so she can grab onto. You know, she can ignore it, or she can grab onto little pieces of it and. You know, then it kind of brings it back to the original form and shows that it's, you know, that it is a form and we are playing over a, a, a re repetitive form. Yeah, and, and does it need the, I mean, of course, you, you know each other long uh, time and you've been working with millions of projects. And uh, does is, is that an essential thing? Uh, of course, probably it is when you play together, right? The, the trust and the knowing of, of each other's language. Yeah, absolutely. And just, yeah, exactly. Knowing when to kind of be in and out um, with the written material and that, you know, we can leave things completely. What was planned, you know, may never happen, but, um, you know, we're there in the service of the music. And because we know each other so well, there are definitely sounds and zones we get into um, that, you know, sound like us, I think. This is so interesting since since I have this chance, this opportunity here to to meet so many of the musicians who are who are going to come next year to Monheim. 
I I find this this as a common thread through all all over. I mean, even there are so many genres like the improvising, the way of communicating in free improvisation is kind of a common ground we all meet in a way. But there's another aspect I I, I thought now again when I watch it is that I read in one interview that you at some point stopped playing chords and went to only play lines, and I think that one can hear that in this example very well that the whole thing is composed and and um, thought about like only lines not so much vertical structures how did that right. happen i mean how how did you come up with was leaving the chords out um well i think at the time i was still playing a lot of standards and um at that time i was switching over to also playing more improvised music and feeling like the you know being an accompanist comping as a pianist um wasn't serving the purposes it wasn't it was getting in the way of what i wanted to do in the mean in the music um and so i just i felt like you know i'm gonna leave out hearing chords from the from the bottom from the root um and you know play more linearly for a while and see how that affects um the free improv improvisation that i was you know kind of working on at the time Yeah, it, it, it. I can. I mean, I found that in so many compositions. Then, when after I read this and I reheard some of your records, I thought, "Ah, oh, here it is again, and here it is again." So this aspect keeps coming, coming back all the time. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um. What I was, what I was getting at. Um. Ah, yeah. There's, there's. Um. Also, like a community aspect, I felt in your work, which I also met in, uh, in, uh, with in, com talking to other people who are going to come to the festival, so that there's like on your new record, uh, the Diatom Ribbons, you have a certain like community of musicians, which some of them appear also in the in the uh, Duopolis, th I think. Actually, I'm not so. Yeah, I think so. So, so there's also this aspect of people who are kind of developing a language together, right? Um, I mean, kind of. It was. It really kind of came about because um, I was playing uh, with Terry Lynn Carrington and um, uh, playing these tribute concerts for Jerry Allen, and you know, met some of the musicians she was working with at the time, like Val Genti and Esperanza Spalding. And, um, you know, I was playing with them quite a bit in different projects and just feeling like, you know, I, I would really, I think it could be incredible to hear Terry play with some of my longtime collaborators like Tony Malaby or Trevor Dunn. Um, so I just put this project together and tried to write some pieces that could kind of be a, you know, platform, a middle ground um, for the musicians to improvise and play and I'm happy. It turned out good. <laughs> well, it, it turned out amazing. And again, as I said before, it's such, it's such a big, um, how can I say, a big picture of, of all different kinds of sounds and music from your solo work to your ensemble things to Diatom Ribbon to Capricorn Climber. All these things are so... It's just such a big, um, yeah, big picture. That's it really. I enjoy that a lot. And uh, when I when I go back to diatom ribbons, I I um, like a lot the work with uh, sound samples, uh, especially with the language samples. You have um, uh, samples from Olivier Messiaen and and other people in the in the record. It was actually talking about the scales, inventing my own scales. I couldn't figure out who that is in the first piece. Oh, that was Cecil Taylor. He was. I, f I actually guessed so, but I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. <laughs> He has such a unique speaking voice. Um, but yeah, I got that from the uh, piano, uh, the jazz piano, um, I mean, piano jazz, the Marion McPartland interview uh, with Cecil Taylor. And uh, there were some really great clips in that interview, but that one uh, especially stood out to me. And um, when I was thinking about Val's role in the music, um, I had some, you know, audio clips and she was using some sort of like sound effects, soundscape like things. And um, I don't know, there's something about I never work with the spoken word um, and it just kind of, I don't know, just popped into my head that this might might be a way to bring things together. And Cecil had just passed away and, you know, I wanted to pay tribute to him, but, you know, not necessarily in the most obvious way of, you know, writing a tune in the style of Cecil. Um, so kind of using more his um his thoughts about music and improvisation um thought maybe that'd be a nice thing to incorporate yeah that's uh, and then again then there's olivier messiaen later in the in the record and even though my french is not so good 
it's 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 weird how how these all these things through the sound and through the way they are incorporated in the music they still tell the story even if you don't understand the words that that's that's always something um, admirable I think. Yeah, the, those clips from Messian. I mean, I was playing a lot of the Messian bird call pieces, um, and like the chords from the very first tune on Diatom Ribbons, um, the, the tra title track Diatom Ribbons, are some Messian chords that I was kind of playing around with, and you know turn it into something else. Um, but Messian was a sort of a big influence when I was working on this project. And uh, I just found this really cool clip of him explaining some of the bird calls and which bird and, you know, he's vocalizing some of the sounds of the birds. The cootie, and, cootie, cootie, cootie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I passed those off to Val and said like, yeah. hey, can you use these? And, you know, and then it's really, it's her prerogative to figure out how she wanted to incorporate it into the piece but there's also a, like the two there's sort of a two piano uh, conversation going on she has all the same material that I have and there's these sort of eight cells and we kind of pass it off back and forth to each other um, which is in, a little bit in reference to a duo with Craig Taborn um, and playing two pianos so that's sort of an extension of, of this idea of you know playing with the two pianos. Yeah, also, these records I really recommend to everybody to check it out. It's amazing with two pianos. It's just another I don't know. It's again another thing I never heard before. Very very interesting. Uh, one one thing also with, with the language samples samples is um, that the role of the singer, who usually is the front man, the front woman, you know, standing and like be making the show, now is is just not not uh, personally uh, um, there, but but still has this. Um, role in a way that's that's also very interesting i thought it makes a di whole different picture to the music awesome. and since since we talked so much about um uh, diatom ribbons maybe we can watch a, a clip we have prepared here one of the tunes um from diatom ribbons is called certain cells and actually introduces a poem of gwendolyn brooks an afro-american writer um the p poem is called two prisoners am i right here yes yeah so let's see that I call for you, cultivation of strength in the dark, dark gardening in the vertigo cold, in the hot paralysis, under the wolves and coyotes of particular silences, where it is dry, where it is dry. I call for you, Cultivation of victory over long blows that you want to give and blows you are going to get over what wants to crumble you down, to sicken you. I call for you cultivation of strength to heal and enhance in the non-cheering dark. In the many, many mornings after, in the chalk and choke.
Very nice. I really like that. And I knew the tune before I knew the video, but when I saw the video, I saw that the tune was composed for the video. But it's not like this, is it? No, the tune was written first, and then the video came second. So, but then the the guys in the video, they they, it, it, is this mostly improvised too, or did this did they um, the dancers did they choreograph that to the tune? No, they, they it was all recorded beforehand. So this, these are like two separate entities coming together. <laughs> Wow. But it looks like they're dancing to the music. <laughs> definitely, definitely looks like. Even though if you if you see it several times, it still looks like. And then in the background, the like, little dog, I like also. <laughs> yeah, well, you you were you were also like to premiere a film. So so working with film is something which is also familiar um, uh, to you. You were to, to premiere a film on the Triennale. I don't know if this is going to happen next year. Yeah, I think so. Um, so me, Misha Karova was the uh, filmmaker and th this clip um, from Certain Cells was actually from the silent film that she was working on. Okay. Um, we collaborated. Yeah, we collaborated on this project that's um, an hour long silent film and I wrote the music for it and I was going to premiere it at Mannheim. And uh, of course, that's not going to happen now, hopefully next year. Um, But yeah, I saw this clip and it just kind of worked perfectly with this tune. And um, you know, <laughs> and 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 the poem, the poem, you added the poem, or the poem was part of the film, or or because it's now it's not only two entities, it's three entities. It's the words, it's the music, and the the movement. Yeah, this this tune was originally a big band chart, and um, I had usually had spoken word, um, various poems read uh, throughout the piece. So there was it was always a plan to have. Um, a poem incorporated with the music and um, I was looking for the right one for the recording and was on a plane and saw this great uh, PBS special on uh, Gwendolyn Brooks and this this uh, poem to prisoners and just seemed like it was you know kind of the perfect fit um, also because the tune was called certain cells so there's a bit of a play on you know cells prison um, <laughs> But also just speaking to how, you know, sort of feeling living in America at this time with the, our current administration and just the difficulties and sort of oppression and, you know, feeling of needing to feel hope. And this poem spoke to that too for me. So, And and the pictures do and the music does and the, the dancers do. And kind of this brings us back to the beginning where, 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 um, of our conversation, like uh, the situation we face right now. And this is, seems to, I mean, maybe it's only because I saw it now in, in our days, but it seemed to be to refer so much to the situation of, of um, uh, discrimination and racism and stuff. So it was a kind of a perfect um, amplification of those problems in the music then. And not only in the music, of course. Yeah, I mean, we all know these are not new issues. It's just there's a new, you know, focus on it. So, um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, of course, I mean. <laughs> I don't know what to say, yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's not, not so much to say. Anyway, uh, Chris, thank you so much for, for taking so much time uh, to be here with us this evening. Or I mean, at you, uh, this noon in in New York. Here it's evening. Um, I'm really looking forward to meet you next year, and I hope we can we can kind of continue our conversation. I can uh, come to hear you live. Thank uh, you. I hope, uh, I hope we get to play too. <laughs> excuse me, I didn't hear that. I hope we get to play as well. Yeah, that, 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 that yeah. would be <laughs> that would be good. Okay, so Talk take care. Good. Have have a good time and and um, stay healthy. All the best to thank New you, York. Thank you. Bye bye, Chris. Take care, stay Ciao. Safe. Bye.